How's it going, pre cal kids? For maybe yes, this is your first ever video lecture flip classroom experience. Okay. Uh, some things to keep in mind. You guys are in pre calc, right? Um, take notes, take good notes. Because this is what you're going to need to look at, see how to do problems to get right for a test, guys. This is These are yours, tools. Maybe someday I'll go, hey, open notes quiz. Not very likely, but I might. Okay. So let's start with one, two. Um, top's kind of funky on this beast. They get better. We're going to talk about functions, guys. We're going to put the fun back into function. Um, how do we do that? I don't know. That no, we're, we're going to try. So what is a function? Good question. A function is a rule to go from set D to R. Okay. It assigns every element in D to an element of R. Okay. Why did I do that when I have a highlighter tool? Bear with me guys. I haven't made a video in a while, so a function from D rule that assigns every element in D unique to R. So what that basically is, we have a set in D, we want to get him to R, but we got to make a rule for him to get there. So that way, we don't have two different things in D going to the same R. They have to all go to their own. Okay. Let's talk about this. Let's, let's, let's take a look at this picture. Okay. Mapping. Okay. If you look over yonder... Every X has a Y, right? Right. If there's only one choice it can make. If it, this X can only go to this Y. And now you can have two X's go to the same Y. Because think about the equation, you know, I'm doing this with a mouse because my pen's broken and I'm waiting for it to fix. Y equals X squared. I feel like I'm writing like Frankenstein. If you plug negative 2 in for x, you get 4. If you plug in 2 for x, you get 4. So you can get the same answer by plugging in two different things. So it's a function. That's a function. This is a function. What makes something not a function is if you plug in an x and you can either get y1 or y3. So that's not a function. Think about if you plugged in 1 for x squared and you could get two solutions, that wouldn't make it a function. Function means it goes 1x gives you one distinct y. Right now everyone's saying, Mr. Williger, this is the most confusing thing I've ever heard of in my life. Will you ever just slow down? You'll get it, trust me. It's, it's not as bad as what appears. Let's take a look at something. Which one of these is not a graph of a function? Okay. What you want to look for is for every x I plug in, you can only get one y. So if we look at this guy, you know at x equals zero, y is zero. When x is one, y is about one. Okay, so you can see along this whole line, when you plug in an x, there's only one y. So that one is a function. Now if you look at B, you have the same story. Sure, there's sharp points on it. Just be careful. Don't poke out your eye. But for every X, there's a Y. When things don't work, like this guy over here, when X equals 0, well, Y equals, well, either equals 2, 0, or negative 2. So this is not a function. Because how do you know which one's which? I plug in an x, how do I know which y I'm going to get out? It's just not a function. Okay. I'm going to show you there's actually a quick little a test that you can use. Okay, That's called the vertical line test. What that means is if you have a graph this is my graph. Nice drawing. 
Some people call it the pencil test as well. What do I have on? Yeah, let's, let's try this. Let's try this. Let's try this. I'm gonna, what can happen is if I take this ruler and go across this graph, I will only ever hit that graph at one point, which means it's a function. Okay, if I hit it at more than one point, it's not a function. It fails the vertical line test, guys. That's all there is to it. So let's take a look at this one again. The quickest way to do it would have been this one passes the vertical line test, so it is a function. This one passes, so it's a function. This one pass. No, it doesn't. And my ruler passes through it three times, so it's not a function. If it passes through more than once, it's not a function. Now, how do I get this ruler off here? Uh, magic trick? Gone. Let's talk about interval notation for a second, guys. Um, I'm probably going to have to pause and let my pen recharge because I have to. We'll see how long I got till my pen dies. Okay. What interval notation is, is a notation you guys are going to see a lot in pre calc and calc. Um, it's just another way to display numbers and information. For examples, let me give you guys some examples. You guys are all, or have all seen, you know, x is greater than 3. You guys understand what that represents. You know, you have an open dot, and x is greater than 3, right? If you're drawing a number line. So, that's what you guys have been doing. In interval notation, what you do is you think about this 3 to what? That goes on to infinity, right? So that means as x includes or it goes from 3 to infinity, right? Now you have to put brackets or parentheses. Parentheses means does not include. Okay? So another example we could do um, would be if you want to turn you know, 2 is less than x, less than or greater than 5, and we want to turn that to interval notation. So we know we're going from 2. Now we fill in that 5, right, because we include it. That's kind of old school number line stuff from algebra. So we're going from 2 to 5. Our parentheses, because we are not including that 2, but now over here we're going to put bracket. Because brackets means it include, includes that number. Okay. Um, sometimes books will put brackets around infinity. I'm not a fan of that theoretically. I always keep parentheses because, in my opinion, how do you include infinity? Oh yeah, that includes infinity. That's part of it. Okay, then plug it in. You, you can't. It's my nerd coming out. It really, really irks me. Because you see what happens is you can't. I'm sorry. Let's just move on before I, I break a hip. Okay. My pen's are right. Let's find the domain of a function. You guys want to talk about domains first? Uh, remember domain is pretty much what can you plug in for x? Okay. Um, the two big cases you're going to come up with where your domains can be restricted because most of the time your domain is going to be all real numbers. I can plug anything into this. Like y equals x squared. Is there anything that limits you what you can plug in for x squared? No, you can plug you can plug a million into it. A million and one, negative five hundred thousand. So your domain is all real numbers. I like this way of writing it. That means I can plug. If, if you're doing your 
interval notation, you know it'd be from negative infinity to infinity. This includes everything. The only two you're going to come across that are going to be different are square roots and if there's a denominator. I'm going to show you how to do both. If you see a square root, what you have to think about is what can't you take the square root of? I can take the square root of 16, that's 4. I can take the square root of 20. I can take the square root of 0, but I cannot take the square root of a negative number. We're dealing with real stuff here, guys. Forget about that imaginary stuff for a second. Did you forget about? Good. What I want you to think about is we can't take the square root of a negative number, right? So to find my domain, I'm going to take this, what's inside my square root, I'm going to set greater than or equal to zero. Because whenever that, what's inside that, is greater than or equal to zero, it works. I subtract my two, and I solve, and I get x is greater than or equal to negative two. Okay? That's my domain. x has to be greater than or equal to negative two. Interval notation for this beast would be, I always had so close in circle, I'm greater than negative 2. So I go from negative 2 to infinity. Uh oh no, it's dying. Parentheses because it's infinity. Bracket because we include it. I have to charge my pen again. Four. Hopefully I can make it through. All right, let's talk about uh, finding the domain when you have x's in your denominator. Now this time, what you have to ask yourself is, what can't I plug in for x? We well, gotta think about this bottom right here. What can't you divide by? You cannot divide by zero, right? It's impossible. Go ahead and try it. Let's you try it. Are you trying? I'll wait. It doesn't work. It's impossible. What times zero equals two? No, nothing does. Well, anyway. Um, so to f when you deal with the domain of these types, you set the bottom equal zero. Okay, and then you solve. Watch. So I take x squared plus 5x plus 6, and I set that equals 0. And now I do some good old-fashioned math, and I factor this piece, right? And please tell me, guys, you get, are good enough to factor this pretty quick, huh? Right? So that means my x equals negative 2 and negative 3, right? 3 times 2 is 6, 3 plus 2 is 5. Um, Negative 3 plus 3 is 0. Negative 2 plus 2 is 0. Okay. So what this tells me is, I'm going to do this way different than your book does, so bear with me. My domain is all real numbers except negative 2 and negative 3. Because all the other numbers work. When you plug those in, you can't divide by 0. Okay. Um, if you're putting this in interval notation, bear with me. What you have is you go from negative infinity to negative 2, right? And then you, because you can't have negative 2, then you go from negative 2, not including it, parentheses, to negative 3. And then you go from negative 3. I meant to put threes here, because negative three is less than two. Hopefully you guys got that, to negative two. And then you go from negative two to infinity. 
because you have three distinct sets here. Um, on a test, I will take that answer. But I'm also going to expose you to that interval notation just so you get used to it. Maybe I'll just click. Um, that is where I'll end it today. Um, we've been talking for a while. We'll do some stuff at domain range. Um, enjoy.